When I learned that Soggy Serial and more Pegasus are good friends, I was truly shocked because Soggy Serial was talking mad in this video, so I thought they were strangers, but apparently I was wrong. So slop is our word for today. And now welcome to YouTube's Infinity Slop Wars, and we have uh, Team Slop and Team Anti Slop. And in the red corner, we have the Slop Legends, Moist Critical, Some Ordinary Gamers, Pyro Live, Oompaville, More Pegasus, West Jet Achito, Sensitive Society, versus the Ayante Slop Club, Raimundo2112, Roman Abelin, and the newest addition, Mr. Soggy Serial. Now the three Ante Slop Knights made a video on how slop content is ruining YouTube, and two out of three of those videos are now taken down. Now, personally, I am on the side of slop here, not because I've made slop myself, but because YouTube videos are subjective. I'm sorry, very subjective. This is like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And I really do think that every creator should uh, be free to make content on whatever they want. If they want to make uh, drama slop, go. If they want to make original slop, no one's stopping you. Uh, has anyone else gotten the feeling that YouTube's gotten pretty stale lately. Subscription feeds are dead. Videos are stretched to the 20 to 30 minute mark without adding anything of value for the viewer. And at this point, every time I open my feed, I feel like it's filled with the exact same videos I've already seen a thousand times before, but just about a different top or 30 minute follow up videos to this. Yeah, so I do think that researching out your slop topic contributed to your for you page. You don't need to blame them for that. And I say that because I also ran into that same problem as well when I saw drama content is getting views. And when I was researching a certain topic like Mr. Beast and Dog Pack, for example, their videos will pop up whether you like it or not. Now this three videos echoes the exact same thing of milking the exact same drama over and over again. And Belgian man really pegged down one person and that's more Pegasus and calling him the slop king and whatnot. But there's a twist on that, and I'll tell you after I show you his bit. Like more Pegasus, who made an approximate $110,000 milking this situation for 12 videos so far, with a total runtime of 3 hours and 45 minutes, where 70% of the videos is just a replay of Dogpack's content, and the remaining 30% is just you making the most slanderous and uninformed statements possible. So clearly he is shitting on more Pegasus, he doesn't like his videos, and oh, he is not done, Buckle up, cause he's about to peg down even deeper. Oh look, more Pegasus uploaded another 3 hour and 30 minutes video on Mr. Beast, which is for 90% a compilation of his previous 12 videos, so it's just one big movie of re-uploaded, misinformative, stretched out slop. Dogpack404 has just posted that he got a cease and desist from the Mr. Beast legal team. We slop channels like this, well they don't respect the viewer's free time whatsoever. Speaking of the devil, uh, during the time of writing this one paragraph, More Pegasus has uploaded yet another Mr. Beast slob video in which he is not just done or finished, he's finally finished. Last time on the Mr. Beast saga. Yeah! yeah, that's it. I've had it. So, his main focus, as you can see, which he considers the sloppiest of slop, is More Pegasus and the other commentators that slaps gameplay on their content. It's not a criticism, it's just what I noticed that they had in common. And oh, the twist is more Pegasus and Belgian man are actually good friends. And thank you Mr. Westjet for covering Mr. Pegasus' side. When I learned that Soggy Serial and more Pegasus are good friends, I was truly shocked because Soggy Serial was talking mad shit in his video. So I thought they were strangers, but apparently I was wrong. Hello WestJet viewers, it's me, more Pegasus, sometimes go by Mega Sus, all right? Ranked number one globally on Diesel Patch's commentary slop tier list, all right? I'm here to comment on the drama. Just kidding, I don't actually need to do anything because his entire comment section is already just absolutely roasting him. Uh, huge hypocrisy in that video. Lots of manipulation and lies that I don't even need to point out. People are already doing it for me. People are saying he comes off very jealous and I don't know why people get so mad at the fact that my videos do well. Like, how is it my fault that people like my videos? And they, they, they keep saying like, oh, you put no effort into your videos. Like, you don't know shit, all right? I put a shit ton of effort into my videos. Also some lore here. I was actually really upset when it dropped because uh, I considered him a good friend. You know, we were on good terms and out of nowhere, 
uh, not a single message, just this cringe backstabby video here when I was literally helping him any way I can to make it on YouTube, right? I gave him YouTube advice, sponsor advice. I connected him with bigger creators. I even offered to cover his expenses when YouTube was screwing him over through AdSense. Like, so I don't know who the hell to trust anymore, man. It, it's just absolutely crazy. I still consider him a friend and I don't want to screw him over because he told me, you know, he wants to make it as a full-time YouTuber. Basically, all I want to say, I'm just going to go listen to my favorite song from the ring to the pen to the... Now, I do think it's pretty scummy. You're in good friends with someone. I mean, at least what you can do is give them a heads up on the piece that you're making so you weren't catching them off guard and at the same time giving your respect for them as a friend. I mean you can hear the disappointment in Mr. Pegasus's voice talking about this. And then he glazes the most respected people in the genre. And at least your slop is pretty well researched and edited with your personality still present. Uh, so here's a star. And there are similar well researched and optionally edited slop channels like Oompaville, Some Ordinary Gamers or Moist Critical who also occasionally upload non-slop content. And that's why I don't really mind them. I watch most of these creators. But <laughs> what? They're as sloppy as them. That's coming off to me as a hardcore meat riding, critiquing smaller creators than the big three, then riding the big three's meat is crazy. And he's harping on this turd as well. With fake titles, clickbaity yet forgettable thumbnails, videos that are 90% longer than they should have been, just content shamelessly being milk dry. Clickbaity and forgettable titles and thumbnails? Forgettable. I don't remember a single thumbnail I've clicked on. Forgettable thumbnails? They're not fucking album covers. Dude, like, do you want me to Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, make a masterpiece every time I'm making a thumbnail? You know, personally, that sounds like sugarcoating. And I guess many people interpreted that as him saying that their videos are ass, mediocre. But in reality, what they do gets results. This is like don't hate the player, hate the game type of situation. And both Raimundo and Soggy Serial folded on their video, with Raimundo stating that his video fell flat on his research and writing, and there were criticisms. And Belgian man Soggy Serial said that his vision is too tunnel vision and only focus on the negative aspects, and there were also criticisms. Sounds coincidentally the same, don't you think? And they cannot win on this. It's a losing battle because of how subjective it is. Like, I mean, you can call my video trash, but I can also call your video hot garbage. And who's, who's gonna, gonna stop me? me? No one, because it's very subjective. And you can see that in his comment section, calling him slop as well. Like making slop talking about slop. And safe to say that he got the ratio pretty bad. But I still do think that he could put that video up again because like I said, it's very subjective. So his opinion still holds weight to it. Okay, now onto the dog pack stuff and bear with me because I myself have been keeping a close eye on the Mr. B situation and Belgian man made some uh, very weak points. And there is no better example than with the Mr. Beast and Dogpack 404 drama where every slop channel jumped on like flies on a turd. A dog bag stirred, filled with lies. Uh oh, he called Dog Pack the God Slayer, or should I say, the Beast Slayer, a turd? Dog Pack stands are not gonna like this. Okay, so here's the meat and potatoes, and this is actually the point that made me want to make a video on this. So Mr. Soggy called Mr. Dog Pack a liar again because of this seven days stranded at sea. Mr. Beast fakes his own challenges? No. <laughs> This confirms that you don't do any research because if you had just reached out to any actual Mr. Beast employee, you'd know the head of safety made them get off of the raft for about an hour for their own safety because there was a lightning storm. Right, soggy bowl of cereal coming in hot here, so he claims that Dog Pack doesn't do any research. Uh, he says, you know, it's because of a safety concern with lightning. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, they can leave the raft. Why not say it in the video? You know, I think Mr. Sagier is getting confused, so let's back it up a bit. So you went and politely asked a current Mr. Beast employee if they really faked the 7 days stranded at sea production yacht claim? Well, it's safe to say that what you got is a very biased answer. Like, what do you expect a current Mr. Beast employee to answer? Are, are you expecting that they will answer the truth? <laughs> and Mr. Dog Pack actually touched on this and I'll show that later. Like if you're my best of friend though, my half brother, a brother from another mother, and someone is shitting on you and claiming that your videos are fake, 
What do you expect I would answer? Of course I will protect your butt cheeks, I am on your side. And I think the only reason that they admitted that they had a production yacht because they had a flaw on the editing, which the tent was empty, that got cut. Now they had no choice but to run with the story. And this is like the other Mr. Beast employee who tried to debunk Mr. Dogback's claim that the raccoon is a paid actor for example. Like if you imagine that you're in court and you said that your evidence is an employee saying that they have just did this for that, the only thing that you'll be hearing from the other side is objection, objection hearsay. While simultaneously throwing these extremely damaging accusations out there. Mr. Beast's CEO and cousin accused of uh, DV, alleged ex-drug addict, allegedly uh, offered drugs or escorts to employees to keep them working late, alleged incident between him and a female colleague which led to her leaving the company, allegedly beat dogs, hit girlfriends, alleged ties to a Ponzi scheme from a previous job, lots of uh, concerning stuff. Yeah, so this dog pack situation with the Mr. B CEO is hot garbage. All allegations without proof. And it's a far cry from his first one where he said that it was alleged but he still provided proof. And there's also a couple things that I don't get here because he just essentially said that, oh, uh, dog pack no research. Trust me, bro, my research is legit. I mean, who's to say that Mr. Dog Pack's team haven't done their research as well? Especially they're the ones in hot waters. And currently, Belgian man's research is weighing significantly less than Mr. Dogpack's. And he even said in his comments that he's doing a deep dive on that, and he's dead set on proving Dogpack wrong. I, I mean, he can't even take jokes. He got offended at this when Mr. Dogpack said that he thinks he was just being overly dramatic. I mean, it can be clearly interpreted as just poking fun, and yet he added this like, Peer pressure? What? Apparently, uh, his sources are answers from the current Mr. Beast employee. And like I said earlier, duh, what do you expect them for the answer? Of course they're gonna deny all the accusations. And if he really wants to get to the bottom of this, I think he should gather all the data from Mr. Dogpack as well before claiming stuff. Cause like, the only proof he had is the video of a Lamborghini that's being crushed and Mr. Beast being open on Mac being a friend? What are you gonna spend the eight hundred thousand dollars on? I've got three friends of mine, childhood friends of mine. And they don't have a lot of money. I'm gonna make sure they don't have to worry about money anymore. I mean, my life's changed now. Congrats, man! You it's deserve it. Forever, bro. You deserve it, dude. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Seven bathrooms. What are you gonna spend the eight hundred thousand dollars on? I mean, my life's changed now. Yeah, I'm sure that $800,000 is really gonna change your life. Or that when Dogback claimed the video was fake. Shredder is CGI. You could've just gone to that video to see that it's clearly not. Oka Metal is going in the world's largest shredder. Shred the car! Shred the car! The hell? That won't even convince a cockroach, they'll call you out. And props again to Mr. WestJet to getting Mr. Dogpack's side on this. Although they have been going back and forth with each other on Twitter, you can pause the video because Mr. Dogpack's response is pretty solid. And the scales are tipping over to Mr. Dogpack's side because Mr. Belgian Man's points is ass. Very weak, like putting a dinosaur in front of Godzilla or something. And the only thing he banks on is the fact that Mr. Dogpack uh, made a mistake on his third video. But I digress, here's Mr. Dogpack's response to Belgian Man's video. All right, WestJet, I'll address some of the points in the, um, I just rewatched the side serial video, I'll address some of the points, and if you need anything else for me, let me know. Yes, sir, drill sergeant. So alleges that I made multiple weird slash inappropriate slash disrespectful jokes towards colleagues, such as, we should do a 1,000 boobs transplant video, stuff that creeped out coworkers. So they're leaving out the context that this video was for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, October. And yeah, the point is to like sort of stir up a little bit of controversy, do a little clickbait. But in the actual video is very respectful. You know, you're like paying for mammograms or mastectomies or cosmetic surgeries for breast cancer survivors. Now, do I think Jimmy would do it in a mature, respectful way? Or do I think he would go, I just bought 10,000 titties and I'm gonna motivate them all. <laughs> Uh, I'm not trying to paint the company as unprofessional, right? I'm not Bob Ross over here. The shit that Ava and Jimmy and, and all these other employees put in the work chats f is far more inappropriate than anything I ever said. While trying to scam the Mr. Beast company he worked at, I did have access to an unrestricted company credit card, which my manager didn't even know that I had. So if I wanted to steal from the company, I could have been sending myself PayPal invoices and paying them on, on the company's dime. So a couple other things that Sagi Sierra got wrong for no reason. He says, Mr. Beast sued me. I have not been sued. I made a complete mockery of their cease and desist. Final warning! You don't do any research because if you had just reached out to any actual Mr. Beast employees, you'd know the head of safety made them get off of the raft for about an hour for their own safety because there was a lightning storm. 
if Soggy Cereal was acting in good faith, let's say hypothetically he's acting in good faith, why he complained about me using anonymous Mr. Beast employees as sources? Why didn't he reach out to me and ask me for verification that those people are actually Mr. Beast employees? He kind of owned you there, soggy booty milk. <laughs> you can't really say anything. I wonder why he didn't put any of that in his video. All right, anyway, I hope that addresses everything. So yeah, that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. Bye.